In this lesson, we're gonna cover polar coordinates and polar curves. And then within that, we're going to look at taking a first derivative, graphing circles, rose curves, limosones, and lemnus gates. First, we're gonna look at these diagrams. So with polar coordinates and polar curves, this is called the polar axis. When you rotate your theta, if it's positive, you rotate up. If theta is negative, you rotate down. And then r is how far out you go. So this point right here, we describe it as r comma theta. So in this diagram, here you have a polar coordinate r comma theta. Again, we rotated up theta, and then you go out a length of r. If your polar coordinate has a negative r, you still rotate the same theta, but I kind of think of it as reflecting the point, or you can think of it as you add pi. And then the point is now right here, negative r comma theta. So here's our definition written out. Point P is represented by the ordered pair r comma theta, where r and theta are polar coordinates of P. And since a complete counterclockwise rotation is given by an angle of 2 pi, the point r theta is also represented by r comma theta plus 2 n pi, or negative r comma theta plus 2 n plus 1 pi. Next we have this diagram. It says this illustrates the connection between polar and Cartesian coordinates. The pole corresponds to the origin. So right here you have your origin. We call that the pole and the polar axis coincides with the positive x-axis. So again, over here on the right side for the x-axis, this is called the polar axis. If the point P has Cartesian coordinates x, y, so you can see this point right here is x comma y, and that would be in Cartesian coordinates. And then also you can refer to P as having polar coordinates r comma theta, and you can see that right here. Then we have the following equations which relate x, y, and r. So first I wanna look at these top two equations. Using SOHCAHTOA, if we look at the cosine of theta, it's going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's going to equal x over r. So with this equation now, we can multiply both sides by r, and so that gives you x equals r cosine theta. So this is the equation we're going to use. Next, we're going to do the same thing with sine of theta. So according to SOHCAHTOA, sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of theta equals y over r. Again, if we take this equation and we multiply both sides by r, we get y equals r sine of theta. And again, this is the equation we're gonna use in this lesson. And then next, using the Pythagorean theorem, since this is a right triangle, we can say that x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and we have that written right here. And then last, we have tangent of theta by SOHCAHTOA. Tangent of theta is gonna equal opposite over adjacent, so it equals y over x. This example says plot the polar coordinate, then find the Cartesian coordinate. For part a, we have the polar coordinate, 2 comma 2 pi over 3. Our polar coordinate is in the form r comma theta, so r is 2 and theta is 2 pi over 3. So we're going to rotate 2 thirds of pi, so 1 third, 2 thirds, and then r is equal to 2, so we go out 2 units, and there's our polar coordinate. Next we need to find the Cartesian coordinate that goes with this polar coordinate, so we can use the equation x equals r cosine theta and then also y equals r sine theta. So we're gonna take both of these values and plug them in for r and theta right here. So we get two times cosine of two pi over three. For cosine of two thirds pi, you can think of this triangle right here. The reference angle is 60 degrees and cosine of 60 is gonna be negative one half. So we get negative one for x. We're gonna do the same thing to find the coordinate for y. We have r sine theta. We're gonna plug these in for r and theta. So we have two times sine of two thirds pi and sine of 2 thirds pi, again, we can think of this triangle with a reference angle 60 degrees. Sine is going to be the length of this long side, which is root 3 over 2. So we end up getting root 3. So our Cartesian coordinate is negative 1 comma root 3. For part b, we have the polar coordinate negative 4 comma 3 pi. So we start here on the polar axis. We're going to rotate 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. So that puts us right here for theta. If r was positive 4, we would go out 1, 2, 3, 4. But because r is negative, again, I kind of think of it as reflecting it across, so it goes over here, or you can think of it as adding another pi, and we're over here, and we go out 4. So here's our polar coordinate, negative 4, comma 3 pi. Next, to find our Cartesian coordinates, we're going to use these same formulas. So first, we start off with x equals r cosine theta, so we get negative four times cosine of three pi. And again, three pi is one pi, two pi, three pi. So it's over here. And cosine of three pi is negative one. So we end up getting positive four. 
Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing for y. So y equals r sine theta. So we're gonna plug in r times sine of three pi. And again, one pi, two pi, three pi is over here. And sine of three pi is zero. So for y, we get zero. So for this polar coordinate, our Cartesian coordinate is four comma zero. And when you look at this polar coordinate, negative four comma three pi, in terms of a Cartesian coordinate, you can see that this point is over four comma zero. This example says, given the Cartesian coordinate negative one, negative root three, find the polar coordinate where r is positive, zero is less than or equal to theta, which is less than two pi, and also find the polar coordinate where r is negative and zero is less than or equal to theta, which is less than two pi. This is our Cartesian coordinate, negative one, negative root three. So I plot that point right here. It's negative one and then down root three-ish. <laughs> Okay, so we need to find the polar coordinate once where r is positive and once where r is negative. Since we're trying to find a polar coordinate, which is r comma theta, first thing we wanna do is solve for r. So to do that, we're gonna use this equation right here, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. For our Cartesian coordinate, we have that this is x and this is y, so we're gonna go ahead and plug those in to solve for r. So we plug these values in for x and y. So we get r squared equals, and this is gonna be one plus and then right here, this is gonna make just three. So we get that r squared equals four, therefore r equals plus or minus two. So since we got plus or minus two, we're gonna use r equals positive two to satisfy this first condition, and then r equals negative two for the second one. Now that we have r, we just need theta. To find theta, we're gonna use this equation right here, where tangent of theta equals y divided by x. So we have our equation right here, we're gonna plug in y and x, so tangent of theta just equals positive root three. Now we ask ourselves tangent of what angle equals positive root three? So it might help looking back at the diagram. So I drew a line right here just to visualize this a little bit better. So you wanna ask yourself, what would be the reference angle here that when you take the tangent of it, you get positive root three? So that will work if this side is negative root three over two and this side is negative one half. And if that's the case, that means that this angle is pi over three or 60 degrees. So this is our reference angle, but again, when you're describing a polar coordinate, which is what we're trying to do for this point right here, so that angle will be, let's see, one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds, four-thirds pi. So here's our first polar coordinate. Let's just double check. R is two and theta is four-thirds pi, and that does satisfy this. R is positive and theta is in between zero and two pi. So next we need a polar coordinate where R is negative and theta is in between zero and two pi. So again, we're still trying to describe this point right here. In order for r to be negative, that means we're stopping up here. So you rotate to this angle, and then if r is negative, it reflects across, or again, you can say add pi, and it gets the point down here. So this angle is pi over three. So again, let's just check this. You rotate pi over three, and then you would go out two, but because the two is negative, it reflects the point down here, or again, when you add pi, it gets you that point right here. So this point works for that second condition of r is negative and theta is between zero and two pi. So here's our two polar coordinates. This example says, given the polar curve r equals sine theta, find the Cartesian equation. So right now, since this equation just has r and just has sine of theta, we're gonna manipulate it so that we can eventually use one of the given equations that relates Cartesian with polar curves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna times both sides of the equation by r. On this side, this is gonna make r squared. And then I just drop this down, so we have r sine theta. And now we can use this equation right here where r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And then we can also use this equation because r sine of theta equals y. So now we have a Cartesian equation. Technically, we could leave our answer like that, but if we were to have this problem show up on like a multiple choice exam, most likely the problem will be rewritten in completed square form. So to do that, we're gonna move this y over to the left side. So now we have our x squared, and then we have our y terms together. So we're gonna complete the square on the y terms. In order to do that, we take b and divide by two, and then we square it. So right now we have b is negative one, we divide by two, which is negative one half, and then we square that, and you get one fourth. We're gonna drop down this x squared, and now we take this trinomial and we rewrite it as a quantity squared, 
and it's gonna be y and then b divided by two. So remember, b was negative one, and divided by two is negative one half. So it becomes y minus one half quantity squared. And then on the right side, we just drop down the one fourth. So now hopefully it's easier to recognize that this is the equation of a circle with center zero, one half, and radius one half. So I wrote that out. We have a circle with center zero, one half, and radius one half. This example says, given the Cartesian equation, x squared plus y squared equals nine, find the polar curve. So right now we have this equation with respect to x and y, and we need it in terms of r and theta. And we're gonna use one of our equations that relates the two. So we'll use this equation right here. We have r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So instead of x squared plus y squared, we're gonna replace it with r squared. So we get r squared equals nine, therefore r equals plus or minus three. And this is our polar curve. And remember that r is the value that you go out, but there's no theta, so that means no matter where you rotate for theta, you're always gonna go out three units. And that, by definition, is a circle. So again, we have our circle where the radius is three, and our center is zero, zero. Next, we're gonna go over common polar graphs, and the first type we're gonna look at are circles. If you have an equation r equals a cosine theta or r equals a sine theta, your graph is going to be a circle. This is the first example of a circle that we just demonstrated in the last problem, and the equation is r equals some constant value a, and then a is how far out you go in every direction. Our next type are these ones up here. If you have the polar equation r equals a sine theta, the circle will lie along the y-axis. So for example, if a is equal to four, then that would be this full length across or the diameter of the circle. That would make the center at zero, two. If the a value is negative, then the circle will lie down here, still along the y-axis, but it's gonna be below the x-axis. If the equation is r equals a cosine theta, then the circle will lie along the x-axis. And similar to this circle, if this a value is six, that's the diameter of the circle, the center would then be at three comma zero. And then similarly, if the a value was negative, the circle would lie over here on the left side. Next, we have rose curves. So the equation for a rose curve is gonna be r equals a cosine of n theta, or r equals a sine of n theta, where a is not equal to zero. So here we have some characteristics of our rose curves. If the value of n is even, the rose has two times n number of petals. So if this was n equals two, then the rose curve would have two times two, which is four petals. If n is equal to six, the rose curve would have two times six or 12 petals. If n is odd, then the rose has n petals. So if n is three, then the rose curve will have three petals. If n is nine, the rose curve will have nine petals. The value in front of the cosine or sine is a, and that is the petal length. To figure out where the first petal is fully extended on a rose curve, you use this formula. You take this a value and you plug it in for r. So once you plug the a value in for r, you would then solve this trig equation by dividing both sides by a. And so you'll get one equals, for example, sine of n theta, and then you'll continue to solve for theta. And I just wanna make a couple of notes here. For the equation r equals a cosine of n theta, here's two examples, this one and this one. You can see that the first petal is fully extended at zero. So for any rose curve that has cosine in the equation, the first petal is fully extended at zero. But for any rose curve that has sine in the equation, again, in order to find where the first petal is fully extended, you take the a value, plug it in for r, so you get this equation, but then to solve this trig equation, you would divide by a, so you get one equals sine of n theta, and that would happen every time regardless of what the original a value is. So ultimately, you're gonna always be solving this equation. So I just wanna talk about this for a second. At this point, to solve this, you would ask yourself sine of what angle equals one, and the answer to that is pi over two. So you end up getting this equation, and then if you solve for theta, you get pi over two n. So this formula tells us where the first petal will be fully extended if the original equation has sine in it. And then finally, the number of degrees to rotate each petal, it's gonna be 360 divided by the number of petals. So for example, on this curve right here, we have the equation r equals a sine of two theta, where n is two. 
A is how far the pedal extends or the length of each pedal. And because there's four pedals, if we do 360 divided by four, that would be 90 degrees. So you take the first pedal and you rotate 90 degrees and that gives you where the second pedal lies. And then you rotate 90 degrees, gives you the next pedal, rotate 90 degrees, gives you the last pedal. Next we have Limassonne curves. We have the equation r equals a plus or minus b cosine theta, or we have r equals a plus or minus b sine theta. For these equations, a and b are both positive, and then there's just a plus or a minus here. If the Limassonne equation has a cosine, then the graph has x-axis symmetry. If the Limassonne equation has sine of theta in it, then it has y-axis symmetry. So here I have some diagrams, for example, and because of the x-axis symmetry, these are all examples of this first equation. So if you consider the ratio of a over b, again, it's this value divided by this one. If that fraction is less than one, then the Limassonne is an inner loop. If the ratio of a over b is equal to one, then it's a cardioid. If the ratio of a over b is between one and two, then it's a dimple. And then if a over b is greater than two, then it's called convex. And one more thing, if the equation has a positive, for cosine, the graph is over here on the right. If the equation has a negative and it's cosine, then the graph will fall over here. If the equation has a sign, it falls along the y-axis. And if it's a positive, then the graph will lie up here. If it's a negative, the graph will lie down here. And finally, we have a lemniscate curve. The equation is r squared equals a squared cosine of two theta, or r squared equals a squared sine of two theta. And a is not equal to zero. So if the equation has cosine in it, the graph will lie horizontally. And if the equation has sine in it, it falls along this line. And then below I've listed where the graph is symmetric about. All right, and finally we're gonna graph polar curves. So our first example is r equals cosine of four theta. So since the equation is r equals cosine of four theta, it's going to be a rose curve. Since n is equal to four and four is an even number, the rose curve is gonna have two times four or eight petals. So here's our equation and a is the number in front, so a is one. n is the number in front of theta, so n is four. And there's gonna be eight petals. Next, we wanna identify where the first petal is fully extended. Because the original equation has cosine in it, it's going to start at zero. And then for rotating each petal, it's 360 divided by the number of petals, so 360 divided by eight, and that's 45 degrees. Our first petal is fully extended at zero, and because A is one, the petal has length one. Then we're gonna rotate 45 degrees, still going out a length of one, and then we keep doing that to get all eight petals. And there's your rose curve. And I just need to make a quick disclaimer. So I just started this by drawing the petal here, then drawing the next one, drawing the next one, and so on. Okay, so I wanna show you guys really quickly on the graphing calculator. Um, right now, you can see I have the calculator in polar mode. Next, I'm gonna press Y equals, and it now has R equals, and I typed in cosine of four theta. Let's see what my window is. Um, let's go negative two to two, and I'm gonna hit graph. Woo, that was fast. Okay, um, so right here, if I press trace, you can see the cursor starts here at one zero. Now, as I press trace to the right, watch how the cursor moves. So it starts tracing out the top half of that first pedal, goes to the center, and then it goes down to this pedal over here. So it definitely doesn't trace out the curve like we drew it. When drawing these, that's totally fine if you just rotate 45 degrees, draw a pedal, rotate 45. But I wanted to make sure to show you guys using the calculator the way in which the pedals actually get drawn. So I'm gonna keep going. So then it goes up to this one, rotates around, goes down to the next one. There, and there, we're almost done. We still have to get this one on the left. And then finally, watch this, it goes back to that first pedal and finishes the bottom half of it. And the other thing I wanna point out is to trace out all eight pedals, notice theta started at zero and went to 6.28, which is two pi. So again, it took zero to two pi to trace out the entire curve. 
Next, we have the polar equation r equals 2 minus 3 sine of theta. And because of this minus right here, we know that this is going to be a Limassol curve. So a is 2, and b is this value here, so b is 3. So the ratio of a over b is 2 thirds. And according to our chart here, 2 thirds is less than 1, therefore this is going to be an inner loop. Since the equation has sine in it, it's going to have y-axis symmetry. And finally, because there's a negative, the graph is going to be down here. Next, I want to look at this equation. I'm going to move this positive 2 to the back. So we have the equation r equals negative 3 sine theta plus 2. So I want to graph this equation as if this was y and this was x. Remember the parent graph for the sine curve. It starts at 0, goes up 1, back to 0, down 1, back to 0. So curves it out like this. Because there's a 3 in front, that's the amplitude, so that's how high and low the graph will go. And then also it's reflected across the x-axis, so instead of going up, then back to 0, then down, it's going to start going down, then back to 0, then up, and then back to 0. And last, this plus 2 is going to shift it all up to. So here's the graph if it was just negative 3 sine theta, then the plus 2 shifts all of these points up to. So here's our curve. And then I took these points and put them into an r theta chart. So we can take these polar coordinates and we can plot them on here. First we have r is 2, theta is 0. So on 0 we go out 2. Then we rotate to pi over 2 and the r value is negative. So if the r value was positive 1, we would go right here. But because the r value is negative, we reflect it down to here. Next we go to pi. So we go all the way to here and we go out 2. And again, to get from here down to here and then back up to here, we do the inner loop. Next, we go to 3 halves pi and we go out 5. So that's rotating all the way down to here and we go out 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we go all the way to 2 pi and we go out 2, which puts us right back here. So there's our polar curve with the inner loop. I also wanted to show one more way to graph a Limassol, and it works with just having A and B. Some people like this method because it's pretty quick. So we've already determined that this has y-axis symmetry and the graph is going to lie down here. So what you do, since you know that the graph is going to exist down here, which is going to be right here, your A value tells you how far out to go. So since A is 2, you're going to go out 2. To determine how far down you go for the bottom half of the curve, you add these two values together. So 2 plus 3 makes 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then to determine where the curve is right in here, you do a minus b. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And since it's negative 1, you go into the curve. If when you do a minus b, you get a positive value, then you would go up here. And again, you already know it's an inner loop, so you're just using these points to guide you in drawing the really rough sketch. So we start over here, and again, you know it's an inner loop, so you just go and you loop it, come around, and then go to the next point, and then you go all the way down to here, and then bring it back up. And again, using this technique, it'll work for any Limassol. You just first want to identify your AB. You want to know what type it is with the ratio. Knowing the symmetry is great because, again, sine, you know that the graph is going to be vertical and then because of the negative you know the graph will be down here and just for reference this is a on both sides this is a plus b and that point right there is a minus b again if this is negative it makes the point go in if this is a positive number this point will be up here and then it would either be a dimple or a convex This example says graph r equals 1 plus cosine theta by plotting points. Again, because of the plus, we know this is going to be a Limassol. This value is a. The number in front of the cosine is b, so b is 1 as well. The ratio 1 over 1 equals 1. Therefore, according to our chart, this is going to be a cardioid. So cardioid and then x-axis symmetry because of the cosine. And also because this is positive, the graph is going to lie over here. Since the graph has x-axis symmetry, that means we can get the points just by going from 0 to pi. So I wrote them out in a chart. I'm going to take all of these values, plug them into theta on the graphing calculator, and get decimal values for r. So our first point is 2, 0. So at 0, we're going to go out 2. 
Next, pi over 6, that's 30 degrees. We're going to go out 1.9. Pi over 4, we go out 1.7, so like right there. Pi over 3, we go out 1.5, so 1 and a half. At pi over 2, we go out 1. So you can see what the curve is doing. It's going from here to this point to this one to here. And we'll keep going at 2 thirds pi, we go out 0.5. So 2 thirds pi, and we go out 0.5. 3 fourths pi, we go out 0.3. So right here, we're going out less than half, like that. 5 6 pi, we go out 0.1. And then finally, at pi, we go out 0. Perfect. So that's the top half of the graph. Because this graph has x-axis symmetry, we can reflect all of these points down here. So here's our curve, and it's a cardioid. And finally, we have our last definition. It says to find the slope of the tangent line to a polar curve described by r equals f of theta. Consider theta as a parameter and write the parametric equations that describe the curve using the equations x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Once you have your two equations for x and y, you take the function that r is equal to and you substitute it in for r so that you now have an equation of x with respect to theta and then y with respect to theta. Then to write the slope of the tangent line to a polar curve, it's dy dx equals dy d theta over dx d theta. This example says, given the cardioid r equals 1 plus cosine theta, find the slope of the tangent line to the cardioid when theta is equal to pi over 3. So first we're going to use these equations x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Next, we're going to take this expression for r and substitute it in. So now we have our equations where x is with respect to theta and y is with respect to theta. And that's going to work out great because to find the slope, we need dy d theta divided by dx d theta. So our next step is we take the derivative of both of these equations. So let's start with x. You can see because we have theta times another theta, we're going to use the product rule. The derivative of 1 plus sine theta is cosine theta. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, and now we're ready to write it out. So dx d theta equals the product of these plus the product of these. Next, we'll take the derivative of y, and again, because we have a theta times theta, we will also use the product rule. The derivative of 1 plus sine theta is cosine theta, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So again, we take the product of these plus the product of these. And now we'll take these expressions and put them into this ratio. And at the same time, it says find the slope of the tangent line to the cardioid when theta equals pi over 3. So we're going to take dy d theta, divide by dx d theta, and at the same time, I'm going to plug in pi over 3 for all of the thetas. Here's pi over 3, sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, and cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Okay, I think I got everything plugged in correctly. Let's just double check. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So this is a 1 half, and this is root 3 over 2. Down here, this would be root 3 over 2. Same thing here. And then this is 1 half quantity squared. Right now, if you look at this as one term, and if you were to distribute the 1 half in, distribute this in, and then square that. The highest denominator is 4. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 4 over 4. And by doing so, when we distribute the 4 on top and bottom, it will get rid of some of these fractions. So first, if we took this 1 half and distributed it to both of these terms, this would be 1 half, and then this would be root 3 over 4. So when we multiply both of those by 4, the 1 half and the 4 is just going to make 2. And then for this term, the 4 and the 4 will cancel, and we'll just have root 3. This denominator is just 4, so when we multiply that, the 4s cancel, and we just have root 3. Same thing right here. If we distribute negative root 3 over 2 to both of these terms, and then multiply it by 4, this first term will be negative root 3 over 2 times 4 is going to make negative 2 root 3. When we multiply these two terms, we get negative 3 over 4. The 4s cancel, and we just have negative 3. And then this is 1 fourth times 4 is just going to make 1. So now we have in the numerator 2 plus 2 root 3. And in the denominator, these make negative 2. And then I'm going to drop down this negative 2 root 3. And finally, if we factor out a negative in the denominator, we can see that these are going to cancel and we're just left with negative 1. So the slope of the tangent line to the curve when theta is pi over 3 
is negative one. All right, so we just did an entire chapter of pre-cal in this one calculus video. Great job. 